Uh, it is indeed. The Syrian crisis was undoubtedly a tragedy. And to truly understand the magnitude of the situation, let's look at the numbers. 90%, 90% of the Syrian population lives below the poverty line. 50% of the Syrians have been displaced, as you have said. Half a million have been killed and two million have been injured. And the Damascus government only controls 55% of the country's uh, territories, while the rest is controlled by various uh, factions, including, including uh, Turkish forces in the northwestern part, Kurds in the north, the U.S. in the northeastern part, uh, Russians in the western coastal areas, and uh, also Iranians controlling uh, the remaining lands through their militias. So Tehran also controls key sectors such as the telecom industry, phosphate mining, and, and major properties. Thus, for that, I would love to say that Syria theoretically exists but on the ground, it's not. So with regards to your question, I think the Arab League has taken uh, notice of this deteriorating situation and has decided to act. While uh, the Arab nations do not have a military presence in Syria, they, they, they have decided to use their political weight to find a solution for their neighbor. This definitely does not mean in any way that the Arab nations are on the same page as the Syrian regime. Not at all whatsoever. And as the late American writer uh, Dorothy Thompson once said, peace is not the absence of conflict, but the presence of creative alternatives for responding to a conflict. So in my opinion, the Arab nations, and I think should not fall into a false dichotomy between support, either supporting the regime or, or its people. Instead, they should hold the stick from the middle by maintaining ties with the internationally recognized Syrian opposition uh, via the United Nations Security Council. Uh, and as a matter of fact, even the Russians, despite their alliance with Bashar al-Assad, host and talk to the Syrian opposition. Therefore, I think the Arabs and the Arab nations should follow suit and engage with all conflicting parties. And I understand that the traditional stance of Arab governments is non-interference, specifically non-interference in the Arab affairs. This situation is different and actually very different in Syria because the instability affects all of its neighbors. And even the Chinese government has played a constructive role in Syria by linking their, their help and aid in rebuilding with the advancement of the 2254 accord. So they have put, so they have put it as a prerequisite or better say a condition. So, and I think there are unanimous consensus from all the five Security Council members.